Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, speaker, consultant, and guardian of The Caring Generation. The Caring Generation focuses on the conversation of caring, giving us permission to talk about aging, the challenges of caregiving, and everything in between. It's no surprise that needing care or becoming a caregiver changes everything. The Caring Generation is here to guide you along the journey to let you know that you are not alone. You're in exactly the right place to share stories, learn about caregiving programs and resources to help you and your loved ones plan for what's ahead. Invite your aging parents, spouses, family, and friends to listen to the show. If you have a question or an idea for a future program, share your idea with me by responding to my social media posts on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Today I'm here to answer the question of why caregiving sucks, but more importantly, when you are in a situation where being a caregiver or any part of your life isn't meeting your expectations, we're going to talk about steps anyone can take to navigate difficult times. If you listen to the show, most of these podcasts are transcribed or associated with an article and a video on my website, PamelaDWilson.com. I'll share a few obvious reasons why being a caregiver sucks, but I don't plan to spend much time on the negative. A video on the transcript page gets into the challenges a little more. In the time we have together, I'd like to focus on steps to move forward. Dwelling on why caregiving sucks while it's okay to acknowledge how you feel isn't a place to focus your mental energy. Negative thoughts steal your spark. So first, a few experiences that all caregivers can relate to. If you have been a caregiver for some time, if not, this may be eye-opening, but you'll know what to expect. Why caregiving sucks is because of the never ending care responsibilities. They eventually end, but that means that mom, dad, a spouse is dead, which is another experience that sucks. Family caregivers put themselves through a lot of self-sacrifices. Feelings of anger, overwhelm, and frustration are common. I also want to share why caregiving sucks for care professionals. Individuals like nurses and CNAs who don't always receive enough recognition. Like family caregivers who care for elderly parents and others with dementia or memory loss, clients or patients can be verbally or physically aggressive. I think anyone who has cared for a person with dementia has been hit, bitten, had your hair pulled, maybe been spit at, had to chase a loved one who was running away from you, or stop a parent from attempting to get out of the car while you were driving 55 miles an hour down the freeway. Personally, that was one of the most interesting experiences I remember to this day. I can personally attest to experiencing all of these, some of them with laughter because the situation felt so crazy and out of control at the time. Humor is helpful in these situations. However, if you are this person's loved one, you probably look at the situation much differently than if you are a stranger like a nurse or a CNA. A patient who verbally or physically threatens you or harms you, if you're a care professional, can be quite frightening. You don't know this person and you have no idea how far they will go in their behaviors. Another reason why caregiving sucks for professional caregivers is dealing with contentious family caregivers. 
Yes, it's no surprise that angry and frustrated family caregivers take their emotions out on nurses, CNAs, hospital, care community, nursing home, or doctor's office staff. The issue in most cases is that the nurse or the CNA who happens to be there is on the receiving end of the anger, which may not be directed at them. Families may be frustrated for many reasons. It's the person who is most available or accessible who gets an earful of the problems and frustrations. So I want to thank these individuals who work in the care system for their patience and dedication to come back day after day to face crazy situations and frustrated family members. Family caregivers deserve the same praise for coming back day after day. I know many who would like to run off and not come back, although they might feel guilty. Moving past these concerns for why caregiving sucks takes us to the idea of looking at how being a caregiver changes your life. For early caregivers, probably not much. But when you've been doing this for five, ten or more years, and the work continues to increase, you might not realize what caring for an elderly parent is doing to your marriage, family, and you. Dedicated caregivers can lose sight. Almost like wearing blinders because of a focus on the needs of a parent to the exclusion of almost everything else in life. By giving up friendships, social activities, sometimes a job. By the way, I don't recommend giving up a job to become a full-time caregiver for so many reasons. Caregivers lose outside contact with the world. The person you care for becomes your world. Before we leave this thought, I want to briefly talk about why caregiving sucks and relate this to the possibility of not doing an excellent job as a caregiver. Research exists. I will put a link in the show transcript that confirms 47% of caregivers for persons with dementia surveyed confirmed that they were abusive in some manner to the person they cared for who was diagnosed with memory loss. You might think, wow, almost 50% of caregivers admit to being abusive. Then you might wonder how the abuse comes about. Nearly 60% of caregivers admitted to being verbally abusive. Verbal abuse may be snapping, yelling, or making inappropriate remarks. Between 5 to 10% reported they were physically abusive. Physically, abuse could be something as simple as grabbing a parent's hand or arm to get them to move along with the caregiver, or slapping or hitting. Another 14% of caregivers confirmed that they were neglectful. Neglect could be anything like not changing wet depends, not giving medications on time, or ignoring a call for help. The study confirmed that all caregivers said they were under high levels of emotional stress. The abuse was more likely to occur in situations where the care receiver, so mom, dad, a spouse, exhibited psychological aggression or verbal aggression or were physically abusive. So in a sense, caregivers may not have known how to diffuse the situation. So. They responded with like behaviors. Caring for a loved one with dementia who experiences memory loss and eventual loss of physical abilities is challenging. The point of talking about these difficulties in the context of why caregiving sucks is to shift thinking away from caregivers being bad people because they are frustrated and maybe unintentionally abusive to the idea that maybe caregivers lack the skills they need to succeed. Think back to grade school and high school. You learned skills. You may have struggled in some of your classes. There were probably people who seemed to sail through school or those who seemed to have it all. There may be people like this in your workplace today. They're the ones who get promoted or they are the popular people. You may be jealous of their success. Instead of being envious and comparing yourself or your life to others, 
I know many caregivers who do this because you tell me you do this. Make your own life. Make your own success. Sometimes all you need is a person to bring an idea to light, to give you that spark, to help you think outside the box or the limits you set on your life. Instead of thinking why caregiving sucks, why not wake up every day and think, life is great. In school, at work, and in caregiving, learning basic skills allows everyone to do better, to make better and different choices. What are your skill gaps in caregiving? You may not know. Think about where you are struggling, where you're having problems. Those areas may be your skill gaps. How do you figure it out? Let's start with one of the essential skills contributing to why caregiving sucks, navigating interpersonal relationships, people problems, difficult people, toxic people, people you'd rather avoid. <laughs> These may include the person you care for, your siblings or others. Begin noticing your reactions. How many times have you been in a situation where you reacted negatively? Or you heard someone say, well, Mary made me do that. Or maybe the person you care for blames everything that goes wrong on you. They can't change because you make it impossible. Do not own their problems. Set your boundary by gaining the insight that we control our responses. We can realize that no one makes us do anything. Your own actions got you here today, to this place where caregiving sucks. Nobody else did this to you. You responded. Life experiences don't make us react in a particular manner. We can choose our response rather than feeling like life sucks. Poor me. No one understands. No one else has it as bad as I do. We have the power to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. One reason caregiving sucks is that we've not realized the power we have to make different choices. Family caregivers and professional caregivers, nurses and CNAs, we all can adjust the way we think and our actions, how we respond. Let's start with a very common experience that I call the mirror to shed light on this. Research confirms that people react negatively to qualities in other people that we don't like in ourselves. Qualities in other people that we don't like in ourselves. So in a sense, we see another person as mirroring our behaviors or what we don't want, and we react negatively. I'll use myself as an example. I do not like negativity or the purposefully adversarial relationships that I see promoted in the news, one side against the other. No, no, no. I may be wearing rose-colored glasses, but I would instead prefer to put my energy into positive things and actions that solve problems instead of create more problems and divisions. I choose not to spend time or be around negative people who have harmful intentions toward other people. That is not how I want to live my life. When I'm around negative or critical people, I want to escape as quickly as possible. Now, it's possible to talk to some people about this. Others, not so much. Look more at why caregiving sucks for you. Ask yourself these questions. How much time do you spend in a situation or with people? who have characteristics or qualities that you do not like or qualities that you're trying to work out of your life. If you're not sure, here's what these qualities or characteristics might be. And here's what you can do to figure it out. It's pretty simple. Every time you respond negatively to a situation or another person, start asking yourself why. Begin questioning your actions and your thought processes. Why am I responding this way? What is my reaction about? Is your thinking influenced by your surroundings, your workplace, workmates, 
teammates, your family, people you spend time with, or the news. People tend to behave and have similar interests as those they spend time with. When you look at the people you spend the most time with, this experience can bring to light your values and what's important to you. Is your life experience matching up to the goals and plans and values you have and hold for your life? Who is in your tribe, posse, or social group? Are these people supporting you? One of the issues with caregivers is that they become socially isolated and give up friendships due to time devoted to caregiving responsibilities. How many of you are in this isolated place where caregiving sucks? We're going to take a quick break and come back to look at behaviors and response patterns that contribute more to why caregiving sucks. Pay it forward to help others dealing with health, aging, or caregiving issues by sharing information about this show and my website, PamelaDWilson.com. The Caring Generation is available worldwide on your favorite podcast and music apps. Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, GeoSavin, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Breaker, Deezer, Listen Notes, Pandora, Player FM, Pocket Casts, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Stitcher, Spotify, TuneIn, and Verbal. You don't have to go it alone. Caregiving doesn't have to be a do-it-yourself job. Visit my website to schedule a one-to-one -one telephone or video consultation with me. Click on How I Help, then Family Caregivers, and then Elder Care Consultation. This is Pamela D. Wilson on The Caring Generation. Stay with me. I'll be right back. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, author, and speaker on The Caring Generation. If you are a working caregiver and your company does not currently offer caregiver support, resources, or educational programs for caregivers, it's time to ask. Please share this podcast and my website information, PamelaDWilson.com, with your human resources department or the company caregiver group. Some companies have them. And ask them to contact me. I provide on-site and virtual programs for corporations and groups interested in supporting employee caregivers. So let's continue with our prior conversation, why caregiving sucks, social isolation, loss of friends, and you planned a different life from the one you live today. If you've given up all relationships except work, this means that your social network may be people at work with whom you're not comfortable sharing your caregiving story or your personal life. If you've given up a job or are a 24-7 caregiver, your social network may be limited to the person you care for. This is another reason why caregiving sucks. Social isolation leads to depression and vulnerability for the caregiver and the care receiver. If your mom, dad, or spouse rarely leave the house, they're stuck with you for their social network. All of this goes both ways. Caregivers give up their lives to become caregivers. Older adults lose their choices because they didn't make a plan for care. The plan was made for them by health issues or other life experiences and now they are as stuck and feeling that life sucks as much as the caregiver. The difference is that if you are the caregiver, I hope you are still healthy and able to do things. Your elderly parent or spouse may have limitations due to their health, physical abilities, or memory problems. They may not have as much cognitive ability to solve the issues we're talking about, which is why you, the caregiver, have to solve why caregiving sucks for both of you. When caregivers become dependent on loved ones for housing, money, and food, 
they dig deeper into the caregiving trap, which is why caregiving sucks. The Caregiving Trap, by the way, is the name of my book and my online support group. When you become reliant on others, any change you make or any change that happens will upset the apple cart. Let's say you want more time for yourself. This desire can cause stress for your care receiver. Mom, dad, grandma, a spouse may feel threatened and react negatively because you not being a full-time caregiver or doing everything you've been doing may threaten their sense of security. On the other hand, a change in their health may require more time and attention from you. Do you see how why caregiving sucks goes both ways? It's important not to blame your situation because you became a caregiver. What did we say about that? Your actions got you to where you are today, just as the actions of the person who needs care got them to where they are today. Because you may feel similarly trapped and threatened, when they react, you react, and vice versa. The step forward from here is to unlearn the behaviors that have engulfed your relationship. Think about why you respond the way you do. Ask the person you care for the same question. The answers might surprise you both and may improve your communication skills. For caregivers who have been in a caring relationship for a long time, you must create a support network and an exit plan. Eventually, one way or another, your caregiving relationships will end or change. You may hire help into the home or move a parent to a care community. One of you may die. We can't predict the future, so we better live for today. If you are a family caregiver, I suggest joining a caregiver support group online or in person to increase your social network. Be careful of people you meet online. Not all of them have good intentions. Caregiver support groups, though, are great places for people to share skills and experiences so that everyone learns. Take a caregiver course and seek out an elder care consultant like myself or a counselor to advise you on more challenging decisions and choices. Separately, and I know you're going to say your time is limited, work toward creating your support tribe or posse outside of caregiving. Colleagues or friends who will support your goals and the changes you want to make in life. If you're in a place where caregiving sucks, it's probably past due time for a change. Think about your outside of caregiving group as creating the company of you. Look at your life as a business plan. If you don't plan your personal life like you plan your work or caregiving life, you'll be stuck in that spiral of why caregiving sucks year after year. Because you may not have all of the life experiences you need, consider who might help you and where you can find these people. Think about how you can contribute to the lives of other people. The group you join or create must be reciprocal, meaning benefiting everyone. The group could be a social group that already exists and you join, a book club, a hiking club, bird watching, whatever it is that interests you. There are chambers of commerce and other business type groups you can join if this is your interest. I don't know if you've heard of mastermind groups. They primarily operate for business, but why not create your own personal mastermind group? Regardless of the choice you make to increase your social contacts, it's going to take work. Not everyone will be interested or have time. If you're setting up your own group, set a few ground rules or boundaries for participation. You'll need a leader to hold everyone together. Will that be you? Family caregivers, everyone needs a support network to transform out of why caregiving sucks to why life is pretty cool. And I mean cool, not cruel. <laughs> On the same token. If you can find other people to come to the home to be companions or visit your elderly parents or spouse, this will benefit them. Are there family members or friends you can invite to visit and then make yourself scarce? 
Can you take your loved ones to a group where they can socialize? Social connections raise our vibrations from caregiving sucks and negativity to hope. It's the sense that someone cares or that we have someone to call when we're having a bad day. Plus, we can be that person for someone else. The beauty of working through why caregiving sucks is that we come to know that changing life situations is possible. We can do it. We can pay back that person or individual who sparked the thought in us about getting out of darkness and we can help other people do the same. Become a bright spot in your own life. Inspire yourself. Do what it takes to create a plan for your personal life and find people to support you. Improve your caregiving skills so those gaps that once seemed like problems and mountains are only occasional hills. Caregiving doesn't have to suck. I'm not here to tell you any of these changes will be easy because you may have a lot of changes depending on where you are. But you'll never know how far you can go until you start. I encourage you, start today. Thank you all for following and communicating with me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube, and giving me ideas for these programs each week. On YouTube, I have hundreds of responses and tips to caregivers and aging questions through my videos. Please share the caring generation with everyone you know who is interested in proven, reliable tips, information, resources, research about caregiving, aging, health, a little bit of inspiration, a lot of hope, and everything in between. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. I look forward to being with you again soon. God bless you all. Love to everyone. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow and a great week until we are here together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.